For the latest Blade Runner news updates, be sure to visit hypernetworkyt.com. What it do, ski guys, it's Farewell34 here with a brand new Blade Runner topic video. While the classic 1982 Blade Runner is one of the biggest sci-fi movies ever, something that isn't as well known about it is the comic book adaptation of the movie. On top of that, the comic book adaptation was actually done by none other than Marvel. So for this video, we're gonna go and talk about the Blade Runner Marvel Comics Super Special adaptation. So let's go get right into it. The Marvel Comics Super Special Blade Runner is the official comic book adaptation of Ridley Scott's 1982 film. It was published by Marvel Comics the same year as the movie and was written by Archie Goodwin who also wrote the comic book adaptation for Alien, another film directed by Ridley Scott. The comic is about 45 pages long and was issue 22 of the Marvel Comics Super Special series. What's interesting too is up until that point, not many of Marvel's adaptations were based off of anything that wasn't their own properties. This was one of the first to do it. The comic was also reprinted later on, missing some of the bonus quote unquote special content and with some of the pages actually printed out of order which were then later fixed. So with the Blade Runner adaptation, it's just like what you'd think it is. It's the film, but just in the medium of a comic book. Usually when a movie is translated into a comic, it has to slim down some of the elements to fit to the page requirements. That's pretty much what happens with Blade Runner. For example, for the comic, it's condensed into a few pages instead of a full feature length film, so it focuses much more on the plot. Because of this, compared to each other, the comic tends to lose some of the atmosphere and mood of the visuals of the film. Similarly, when it comes to the use of the android and questions of reality with the replicants, they don't come off as real or human as the others in the comic compared to the movie. As well, since it's a comic book adaptation and has print dialogue versus acting and voice acting, the tone and messages aren't as effective. In the Marvel Comics Super Special Blade Runner, the comic, however, still emphasizes the future aspects to the story. For example, the opening panel actually starts off with flying cars and the Tyrell Corporation building, so it keeps that tone throughout it. With regards to some of the more famous and notable sequences in the movie, for the most part, we get them in the comic. One example that's actually in the comic that's a little different is when Deck her gun downs the female replicant who flees. That's the one scene where she also goes through the store window in slow motion and is all this glass flying around. For the comic book adaptation, they actually have this scene along with some of the other more famous ones, but they are depicted slightly different because it's a comic book they decide to use full pages showing the aftermath of the incident of that sequence and is slightly more graphic. For example, they show the replicant's face being shot. Apart from that and it being from Marvel Comics, it's pretty much just a watered down, little more simplified version of the movie Blade Runner. Anyway, but that wraps it up for this video on Marvel Comics Super Special Blade Runner. What did you think? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section down below. As always, if you enjoyed this video, then be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the Hybrid Network if you haven't already. I'm Fellow34. I'll see you guys next time. Take care.